Hey everyone, today's a special video for me. We're gonna do an overview of the KC900, the latest custom motorcycle I built. This was a very fun, rewarding, but challenging project all at the same time. In this video, I wanna talk about why I built the bike and what inspired me to design it and engineer it the way that I did. And then I want to dive into the actual fabrication processes that went into it, and the engineering, and the materials, and what it took to actually construct the motorcycle. First off, why did I pick this build and what was the inspiration? There's so much context that I could give you guys around this, but I'll try and keep it brief. I knew that I wanted to build a bike that was flat track inspired, a street tracker if you will. I spent so much time in the flat track industry working with teams and riders and building parts that I just organically gravitate towards that style of motorcycle. I think that proportionally, geometry wise, 19 inch wheels, I think that it's a very attractive uh, geometry for any motorcycle, uh, but for a custom bike especially. So with that being said, when we go over the motorcycle and do the close-ups of all the components, you're going to see a lot of the parts were inspired from the racing industry um, and the flat track racing industry specifically. Jumping from engineering to the other side of the conversation would be the design elements. My aim with this motorcycle was to push my engineering knowledge and skills as far as I could go. You're gonna see that it has a titanium frame and an obscure rear suspension setup, but also maintain that very tasteful, timeless design aesthetic that speaks to a broad range of people, and in my opinion, never really goes out of style. So I don't wanna to get too carried away here, but I do think it's worth mentioning the amount of very talented, intelligent, sharp individuals um, that I've had in my life along the way that have been uh, huge inspirations, uh, teachers and almost mentors at times in terms of fabrication, engineering, design and everything uh, that goes into it. Regardless of the industry, whether it be the racing industry, the custom car industry, custom bikes, um, these people are, are phenomenal fabricators and engineers in their own right, and uh, I'm happy that I'm able to, to call them friends. But just to list a few, you know, on the racing side, Ricky Howerton, amazing, David Zanotti, incredible mind, Brian Bigelow, you know, the list goes on. On the custom bike side, Locke Baker, uh, Max Hazen, Winston Yeh, Cherry's Company, Hot Doc, you know, I can go on and on, but um, it's just important to know that um, we all see and appreciate each other's work, and there's, there's something to be learned from all of those guys, and uh, um, I've been very lucky to call a couple of them good friends of mine, and, and uh, have been able to acquire knowledge from them. The other thing I should say is uh, my dad is, is uh, deep into the hot rod culture, uh, specifically early Fords, black, tasteful, uh, you know, post-war hot rods. And uh, he's always had quite the eye and uh, taste for the aesthetic of the cars. And uh, I think at a young age, I was able to sort of pick out and assemble and uh, figure out um, what looks nice and what doesn't. And of course that all comes down to opinion and, and uh, it's all subjective, but I should mention that uh, um, I did definitely learn some stuff from my dad and how to make stuff look right. All right, enough BS. Let's get into the motorcycle. First and most important component to any custom motorcycle you build is what power plant am I gonna use? I chose to use the early Ironhead engine, Ironhead Sportster, for a multitude of reasons. Number one, I wanted a unit engine. I did not want an engine transmission separate because I was going for a flat track racing slash XR750 
design appeal. I wanted the engine to look like an XR750, but to not have the price tag as an XR750. I also think unit engines and iron heads specifically have a very attractive flair to them. And uh, be confident I was going to be able to make that engine look correct in this application. Also, I don't want to hide the fact that I just like early Harley engines. They're just a very beautiful, uh, attractive engine. And um, aesthetically, I think that they're pretty tough to beat. So this is a 900cc Ironhead engine, Magneto ignition, kickstart, just kind of an old, heavy, slug of iron and aluminum. Next, let's talk about the frame. I built the frame out of 0100 wall 6AL 4V grade nine titanium. You can see some welding up here by the head tube and some massive gussets in there. Titanium's pretty easy to work with. Of course, it reacts a little different than steel or chromoly. It bends a little different, but once you get the hang of it, it's not bad to work with. You can see up here, the subframe is also titanium. There I machine those clevises on a manual machine and the subframe is all adjustable. So you can move that seat or that tailpiece up and down. The swing arm is made out of 4130 chromoly. I used rectangle tubing, 065 wall. And you can see how I used another piece of the rectangle tubing on the bottom and sort of triangulated that swing arm. It rides on sealed ball bearings on both sides. Here's another look at the frame from the other side. Okay, what is this obscure rear suspension? So the suspension is a torsion bar rear suspension. There's a one inch torsion bar that rotates in this bottom frame rail on brass bushings. It's actually a micro sprint torsion bar that you can get right from the Speedway catalog. You can see how I anchored it in the front to the frame. It doubles as an engine mount and a torsion bar anchor with some titanium plates and some good hardware. So it's anchored in the front and then in the rear, the torsion bar is linked to a torsion bar arm, which swings around the front of the back tire and links to the other side of the swing arm with an adjustable turnbuckle. So how does that work? As the swing arm moves up and down in the rear, it twists that torsion bar, and that is how you get your spring rate. And it's linked with a turnbuckle in the rear, so you can adjust the preload on that torsion bar. And then you control your dampening with a single dampener in the rear. So the torsion bar is just your spring rate, obviously. And then you control the dampening with this unit in the rear. Next, let's go on to the bodywork. The bodywork is all handmade. 
out of 080 5056 aluminum. See the small LED tail lights in the back. The fuel cell and the tail section are integrated very nicely together. You can see the gas tank mounts in the front. The oil tank sits under the seat piece and it kind of sits in a saddle that acts as an inner fender as well. So let's move on to some other components. Of course, these are 19 inch spoke wheels. They're actually a and a quick change racing hubs. I used a Hoosier flat track tire which I thought was very fitting for this application. I love the white lettering on the side of the tires. That's always a nice touch. These are Olean's front forks, the same forks we use on the race bikes and same with the triple clamps. These are flat track racing triple clamps that come on the FTR 750s, the Indians. This headlight bezel here is kind of a special part. I modeled that on CAD and had it 3D printed out of a black poly. I always like when the, a custom motorcycle has a nice headlight fairing. I think it kind of completes the front of the motorcycle. If we move this way, we got a lot going on in this area. So here's another 3D printed CAD drawn component. This is the intake printed out of a black poly. As you can see, it's a two-piece system, so you can sandwich a filter material in there. That works pretty nice. If we work down this way, you can see the foot controls. All of these were CAD modeled, 3D printed first for test purposes to see if it would all fit up. And then of course it was CNC'd, um, CNC machined and black anodized. So both controls are on the right hand side on this motorcycle. The bottom lever is your brake lever. This is very common in the world of flat track racing to have um, both levers on, on the right side. They did that on the XR 750s. The brake lever rides on two sealed ball bearings and a thrust bearing on the inside. The foot peg is constructed all of titanium. That is a part I designed as well. I drew it on CAD and then had it water jetted out and fabricated it. The top lever is the gear selector, of course, which is a direct link to the transmission on these Sportsters. And then the big bracket in the rear is just kind of a collector of sorts. It picks up engine mounts, um, or it is fastened to the engine cases, cases, I should say, and picks up your brake lever, your foot peg, your gear selector. It picks up your brake reservoir all in one. I thought that the foot controls on this bike um, were a nice component and they work very well. As I'm sure you saw already in the video, the exhaust and headers and muffler are all titanium. CP1 one millimeter wall titanium uh, with a custom titanium muffler for this bike. So this is a two into one titanium system. There is one step in the headers. And the bike has a bit of a muffled sound. It, it sounds neat. It doesn't uh, have quite the racket as your typical Harley. The two into one system with the racing muffler muffles it down and kind of gives it a soft tone. So you can 
can see the cap is all titanium as well. Aircraft style gas cap. You can get that from Aircraft Spruce online. You can kind of see how I counter sunk it in there. Top engine mount is titanium as well. You can see how I windowed that out in there to get the nut. Left side titanium foot peg, the same as the right. Just a Grameca rear brake, nothing special. Thank you everybody for watching the overview of the KC900. This was an incredible project, a fun build, and uh, thank you for taking the time to learn about it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Comment below, or you can reach me on Facebook, Culico, uh, Instagram, Culico as well, or TikTok, um, and engage with me there if you have any questions or comments. We'll see you on the next video.